Come on, hey, we're continuing our series called Pray First. This is a series that we've been in for two weeks now. We've got about three more weeks that we're gonna ride this thing out all the way up until Father's Day, and so it's gonna be continually good. I cannot wait to jump into today. Our theme verse is Colossians 4.2. We love to honor God's word. If you're able to stand, would you stand just for the reading of God's word? Last week, we read this verse together, um, but you didn't do very good. So I'm gonna give you the week off and let you really prep for next week, all right? So I got it, I'll do the heavy lifting, you just follow along. Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Somebody say amen. amen. Take a seat. So prayer is something that we're gonna put first in our lives. We're gonna devote ourselves to it. We're gonna give ourselves to it and ask God to move in our hearts. That's why we're calling it Pray First. Because before we send that email, before we send that text message, before we call that person and give them a piece of our mind, come on somebody, we're gonna pray first. We said last week that we don't want prayer to be the spare tire in our car that we only pull out when we need it. We want it to be the steering wheel that drives every area of our lives. Let me get you caught up, just in case you're new to our church, let me get you caught up on where we've been for this series. Week one, we said this, God doesn't just wanna be a part of our lives, come on, he wants to be first in our lives, and come on, he deserves to be first, amen? amen. He deserves to be first in our lives, so God, every area of our lives, we want you to be first, even when it comes to prayer. And then we said this, this is just a helpful tip to get your morning started, to honor God with the first of your day, when you wake up, you might not be at your best, but you're not giving God your best in that moment, you're giving him your first. And so God, here's how we're gonna do it. Hey, we're just gonna put a song on and just spend five minutes in worship. It doesn't mean I'm, have, I'm even singing the song. Sometimes I just listen to the words. Five minutes in God's word, I'm just gonna spend time reading your word, just one chapter. Maybe I'm even gonna put on the audio where somebody reads it to me because I'm not fully alert yet. That's okay too. And then we're gonna spend five minutes in prayer just connecting with God and we're gonna believe that that 15 minutes we spend with God in the first part of our morning is actually gonna bleed into every part of our, di our day. So every area of our lives now, as I go throughout my day, God, because I gave you the first, now, God, I'm gonna invite you into every other area. And then last week, we came around this idea that we gotta have, come on, the place of prayer, meaning let's have a dedicated place in our house where we seek God. And I, I don't, don't, don't overcomplicate it. For me, it's my dining room table. Well, isn't that where you eat too? Yeah, it's like two great things happen at this table. I get to eat and I get to seek God. Come on, for you, you might have an extra room. It might be your bedroom, might be your living room, wherever it is, but just having that dedicated place of prayer. Jesus often went up on a mountain to pray. Like that was his dedicated place, just to have that place. And then not only to have a place of prayer, but to have a plan of prayer. I think sometimes a lot of us get started in prayer and then we kind of run out of what to pray. But if we have a plan in place saying, hey, this morning when I wake up on Monday, I'm gonna spend a lot of time praying for my family. Praying for those family members that drive me crazy, praying for the family members that I actually like, praying for just praying for my family. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend Tuesday, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for my friends, I'm gonna spend Wednesday and pray for our world, I'm gonna spend Thursday and pray. Does it mean you only can pray for those things on those days? No, 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 it's just a plan that you have in place. And then lastly, we wanna connect with the persons of prayer. So many people ask, do I pray to Jesus? Do I pray to God? Do I pray to the Holy Spirit? It's all the above. And if you're like, well, I spent five minutes praying to Jesus, but I only spent three minutes praying to God the Father. Like, is God mad at me because I didn't give him enough time that I gave to Jesus? No, 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 no. He just wants you to connect with him. And you get to connect with Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit in different ways. And that's the end result of prayer. If we're missing connecting with God when we're praying, we're doing something wrong. So let's not overcomplicate it. Let's make it simple as best as we can. Now, I forgot to tell the 830 the funny, awkward, weird story about prayer. I'm just now realizing that in this moment as I'm preaching to you. So the 830 didn't get to hear this, but I told you week one of this series, I grew up in church, experienced some really awkward, weird stuff. We did the squeeze, squeeze, something else last week that I honestly can't even remember, but I'm gonna tell you right now that the, that the weird thing I don't know how this happened, when this came into the church, but it was another youth group thing that we would go around at the end of a lesson and our teacher would take prayer requests and people would say, pray for this, pray for this, pray for this. And, and, and all of this kind of surfaced up in my youth group where somebody would say, I have an unspoken. Anybody know anything about the unspoken prayer? Okay, and what that was basically saying is, I got something in my life going on right now, I'm just not ready to talk about it to everybody else, and so I need you to pray for me, but you just don't know what to pray for me, because it's unspoken. And so then, it just got out of control. 
because then the next person would be like, well, I got two unspokens. And I'm telling you, it got all the way up to like nine unspokens. And then somebody would be like, I actually have an unspoken praise that I wanna share with you guys, meaning something really good happened in my life, but I'm not even gonna tell you what it was. It's unspoken. <laughs> That's weird, right? It's just weird, it's awkward. And I get it, sometimes we have things going on in our lives that we're not ready to let everybody in on, but you know how prayer works? When I actually know what's going on in your life and I know what to pray. So if you come to me, hey, Pastor, I got an unspoken, I'm gonna slap you in the face and go, <laughs> I'm not praying for you this week on your unspoken, amen? All right, with that being said, I wanna talk to you today about a plan of prayer that I find myself praying often. So this is a plan of prayer, Psalm 23. I pray this in my own life, and this is probably one of the most famous psalms. If you grew up in church, you definitely know it. If you didn't grow up in church, odds are you have heard this somewhere at some point in your life, I'm gonna read through it, you just follow along, I'm gonna read the whole chapter, it's only six verses, so don't worry. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, woo! He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path, for his name's sake. Come on, let's keep reading. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, woo, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Come on, let's close it out. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Woo! I love the word of God. So let's work through this verse by verse. You ready? Psalm 23, verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. I love that King David wrote, he's not just a shepherd, he's my shepherd. Meaning he's not just a shepherd that's out there doing his thing, he is my personal shepherd. So the question I would ask every single one of you here this morning is this, is he your shepherd? And nobody can answer that question except you. And would you be honest with yourself today? Be honest with yourself. Is he your shepherd? Meaning this, is he the one that's guiding your life? Are you surrendered to him? Or are you your own shepherd? And if you, you are your own shepherd and you're kind of calling the shots in your life, I just need to make you aware of something that maybe you weren't aware of. You're not a good shepherd. You don't make good decisions with your life. Raise your hand if you know you make bad decisions in your life. Raise your hand if you've made some, a lot of bad decisions in your life. Come on. God is the good shepherd. He's not just a good shepherd, he's my shepherd. And here's the really good news. If you are not calling God your shepherd, you can today. There can be a moment in your life, whether it's today, tomorrow, or whenever, where you come to a grips and you go, man, I've been kind of leading my life and I've made some really poor choices that have led me down some really bad paths that have resulted in some really negative things for my life. But God, if you're telling me that you wanna be my shepherd, that you know what's best for my life, then I wanna surrender all that I am to you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He's a good shepherd. He's not just a good shepherd, he's my shepherd. And because of that, I lack nothing. I have everything that I need. Anybody grateful for a good shepherd this morning who gives you everything? Does that mean I don't need to work tomorrow? Because I like, no, go to work, all right? Work hard at your job, represent Jesus while you're there. Spiritually speaking, it's saying, I don't have to search for anything else. God, everything I need, I have found in you. Now here's the good news for you and I. That means that if he is our shepherd, you ready for that? That means we are his what? Sheep. sheep. We are his sheep. If he is our shepherd, then we are his sheep. But here's something you probably did not know. Sheep are the dumbest animals on the planet. <laughs> so what is God saying here? You ain't that smart. Now if you didn't know that, I'm gonna show you a video to let you know how dumb sheep are. Check this out. There's no audio, no audio required. This sheep is stuck. Thank you, God, for this, this young man that comes in and pulls this sheep out. Come on, get him out, get him out. Got him, rescued him, yeah! Let's go! <laughs> That's funny, I don't care who you are. Let's run it again, I'm just teasing, I'm teasing. 
That's our lives. You ready for this? We are stuck in sin. Are we doing it again? Did we do it again? No? Okay. We're stuck in sin. We can't get out. We need a rescue. We need a what? A savior to come and pull us out and rescue us. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for being the savior that can do for us what we could not do for ourselves. If you are stuck in your sin today, there is a savior that is ready to rescue you and pull you out. But then he saves us and we're like, woo, boom, <laughs> right back into making bad decisions. So we don't need to make the decisions for our lives. We need to let our shepherd guide us. And that's, that's what he does best. He's a, he's a good shepherd. He's, he's my shepherd. Is, is he your shepherd? So we can pray that. We can start our prayer off by saying, God, thank you for being my shepherd. Thank you for being the, the one that leads my, thank you that I lack nothing. Everything I need, you have given me. Thank you, God. You're a good father. And then we go on to read this in Psalm 23, verses two and three. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Come on, he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. I highlighted this because this isn't anything that we're doing. It's everything that he's doing for us. Why? Because he's a good shepherd who wants to lead us. And he says this, he, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Well, some of us are so stubborn. We're like, I don't want to lie down. I don't want to. He's, he's going to make you lie down. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. God's like, I know what's best for you, so let me lead you. And if you don't, I'm going to make you lie down. I'm going to slow some things down in your life so that you get in those green pastures. Where, where? So you can just rest. Well, what were the green pastures for them to eat, for them to chill, for them to hang out? He leads me beside quiet waters. He wants to bring peace into your life. He wants to lead you into areas where, where more hope and more peace come into your heart. He refreshes my soul. Come on, I had a moment this week where I just got real honest with God and I just said, God, I'm so tired right now. Like, like ministry is hard right now. We got some family stuff going on. Like there's a lot, and I understand some of y'all are walking through a lot more difficult stuff than what I'm experiencing right now. But in that moment, I'm just saying, God, I'm tired. And don't you know, in that moment, I just invited the good shepherd into my heart and said, God, I, I just need you to come and refresh my soul because I'm exhausted and, and God met me right where I was. Come on, that's, that's the good shepherd. That's what he does. And then it says, he, he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. He knows the right path for my life. We don't always know the right path to take. Come on, as sheep, we're gonna jump right back into some of that old pattern, those old behaviors, that old sin. And God's like, no, 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 let me lead you. I know what's best for your life. If you've been around Rise Church long enough, you know, you've heard me say, my favorite chapter in all the Bible is Luke 15. Jesus tells three stories, and one of the stories is of a shepherd who had 100 sheep. 99 of them did exactly what they were supposed to do. But one of them made some really bad decisions. I do that every time I tell that story. You humor me and laugh at me. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. If you're first, your first time here, that was the first time you ever heard that. I, I do it all the time. I love it. But I nailed that one. That was actually a pretty good impersonation. I'm not gonna lie. This one sheep wanders off. And if, if I'm the shepherd, I'm looking around going, 99 out of 100, that's not bad. But not for this shepherd, not for our shepherd. He leaves the 99 to go find the one that's lost, the one that wandered off. Who's that one? That's us. We're the stupid sheep that made terrible decisions, that chose sin and wandered off. And it says this, when the shepherd finds the sheep, he doesn't beat it, he doesn't yell at it, he picks it up, puts it on its shoulders, carries it home, and then throws a party because he found his lost sheep. That's the father. That's the good shepherd. He loves you. And if today you're the lost sheep that doesn't have a relationship with God, he would love nothing more than to pick you up, carry you home, and bring you into the family of God. And when he does, all of heaven will throw a party. And guess what? We're gonna join in on that celebration. That's who God is. That's what he does. So when we're praying Psalm 23, we're praying, oh God, thank you that you, you, you bring rest to my life. Thank you, God, that you, you lead me beside those quiet waters, then you bring peace and hope into my life. Thank you, God, that you refresh my soul when I'm weary and tired. Thank you, God, that you guide me. God, I don't know what's best for my life, but you do. Thank you, God, that you guide me on the right path. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I know what it's like to follow the wrong path, 
God, thank you that you lead me on the right path. And when we pray that, here's what we're doing. We are acknowledging that God knows what's best for our lives. When I'm praying and saying, God, your will be done. Lord, you lead me today. God, my heart is surrendered to you. God, you know what's best, not me. I'm a fool. If I'm in charge today, God, I'm gonna make some bad decisions. But if you're in charge, I know you're gonna lead me down the right path. Can I get a good amen? amen. Come on, let's keep reading Psalm 23, verse four. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here we are in verse four, and now David says, I'm in a valley. I find it crazy that he could have started this whole psalm, verse one, and said, God, I'm in a valley. Where are you? How many of you have ever started your prayer like that? Hey, God, you know what's going on in my life right now? What are you doing, God? Where are you? He doesn't start like there. Verse one, he says, you're my shepherd, which means if you're my shepherd, then I know that even if I'm in the valley, you're gonna strengthen me in the valley. You're gonna comfort me in the valley. You're gonna be with me in the valley. You're gonna be for me in the valley. I'll keep going until you start clapping. God, you're gonna refresh me in the valley. Come on. So I'm in a valley, but you're my shepherd. And the beautiful thing, maybe you grew up King James Version, even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. It sounds a little more creepy, right? I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. Well, how do you get a shadow? Light shines. So even though I'm in a valley, the light of Christ is still shining on me. And the good news is, oh, this is such good news. God isn't just watching over me while I'm in the valley. He's actually in the valley with me. Three people, no, 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 it's too late, it's too late. Three people are excited that God's with you in the valley. See, it would be really cool if we're like, oh man, isn't that just so sweet of God just watching over me while I'm in the valley? Oh, isn't that just so sweet of Jesus just up in heaven telling me that he loves me? No, he's more than just sweet. He's a personal savior. He didn't shout from heaven, hey, you guys know I love you, right? No, he stepped down from heaven, came to earth, died on the cross for our sins to show us how much he loves us. So now we're in a valley, but here's the good news. I'm not alone in the valley. Let's go back. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, even though I'm in the most difficult days of my life, even though life is a struggle and hard, whoo, I don't have to be afraid of what I'm walking through because you're with me. My kids, my, I got three kids, one of them's young, she doesn't have to do too many chores right now around the house, but my older two, 13 and 15, like that's what we have kids for, right parents? Come on, so that they can do all the, all the, all the work around the house that I don't wanna do anymore. And so, so I make my kids take out the trash um, the night before it's trash night. And, and like many of you, you get to about nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and you go, oh, dang, it's trash day tomorrow. We gotta take the trash cans down to the road. And so I'll grab my kids before bedtime and go, hey, I need you to take the trash cans down. Not so much anymore, but when they were younger, they'd be like, dad, it's, it's dark. I don't, I don't want, I don't, I don't want I'm, I'm kind of scared to take the trash. Will you go with me? And I'm like, no because that's why I had you, so that I don't have to go down. That's why I'm, if I, if I have to go with you, I might as well just take the trash down myself. You get out there, and then, well, well, Dad, will you just peek your head out and just watch us walk down? Fine. Because if some, God forbid something did happen, I don't wanna be that dad, you know what I'm saying? And so like, I, I, I walk down with them about halfway, I'm a good dad, and everything. And, and here's the thing, like, they'll do it, and they won't be afraid if, if Dad goes with them. That's the father. Hey, God, if, I, if I'm in this valley, it's so comforting to know that you're with me in the middle of it. See, and that's where the devil would come along, right? And he'll say, you're in the valley, and God's abandoned you. You're in the valley, and, 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 and God doesn't care about you, because if he cared about you, then you wouldn't even be in the valley to begin with. And the reality is, sometimes we put ourselves in the valley by bad decisions. Not everything is the devil. No, you just need to stop being stupid and foolish sometimes. But then other times we find ourselves in the valley outside of control, that health diagnosis, that financial stuff, that relational strain that's going on. Like we all have walked through difficult moments in our lives. And in that moment, I thank you, God. This is my prayer that I pray. Thank you, God, that I'm not alone. God, yeah, fear's real right now, and fear will try to grip me and paralyze me. But because you're with me, that fear can be driven out in Jesus' name. And so, God, thank you that you're with me even in the valley. And then, I love this, it says this, your rod and your staff, 
Come on, they comfort me. I wish I had a shepherd's rod that I could have brought with me today. My wife had a sword up on here a couple weeks ago. I wanted to upstage her and have a shepherd's rod, but I couldn't get one, okay? And so, but, but you've seen a shepherd's rod. Like if we had a picture, like it would have like a hook on it. Do you know what that rod was for? It was to grab the sheep and pull them away from danger. To, like if, if a sheep was, was getting too close to the edge of a cliff, like bring them back. Sheep are so fluffy, right? Like super fluffy. If they ever try to get like water from a river, if they put too much of their head in, all of that fluff is gonna get absorbed and it's just gonna pull their whole body in. And so the shepherd would be there watching them and be ready to grab them and yank them back if it needed to. Is that mean? It's loving, isn't it? God's the same way with you. Oh, you're, you're getting a little too close to that cliff over there, so I'm just gonna yank you back right now. And it might feel like, oh, God, you don't want me to have any fun. No, 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 I'm protecting you. I'm actually correcting you. That, you're going down the wrong path, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull you back. Now, if your dad was anything like my dad, he didn't believe in timeout. He believed in take you out. <laughs> Come on, somebody, anybody in the house right now? Yeah, 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 okay? So then, if we're not careful, our mindset of God can be the same thing. Oh, God, you're just out to get me. And in the early years of my Christianity, that's what I thought God was doing. That rod and that staff, they weren't to protect me. They were to whoop me if I ever got out of line. Oh, Adam, just, oh, wait, oh, I'm ready. Like, do it. I dare you, Adam, to do that. And then God was like, wham. No, no, no. The rod and the staff of the Lord, they're not to beat me. It's to comfort me. Now, God will use that hook to correct me if I get off the path, but he'll also use it to protect me. He'll also use it to surround me. Because the reality is this, that everywhere the shepherd was leading the sheep, he always knew the best path to take. So if they had to go from one place to another, he would say, oh, we're gonna go this way because there's green pastures where they can rest. We're gonna go this way because there's some water that they can get to drink. We're gonna go this way because I know there's always other animals that are looking for a mid-afternoon snack, but if I take them this direction, there's less danger. And then when those wolves and those lions would come to eat one of those sheep, that shepherd would stand in the middle between the sheep and that animal, and it would take its rod and staff and say, I dare you to come near my sheep. That's the father. It's not to beat you up. It's not to take you out. It's to fight off the enemies that are trying to come against you. Even though I walk through the darkest of valleys, even though I go through the hardest of days, you're with me. Let that be your prayer tomorrow morning when you wake up. Oh God, I'm in a valley right now. We're not saying the valleys aren't real. No, the valleys are real. We're not saying the fear's not real. Oh, it's real. We're saying there's something greater than the fear. Amen. Amen. We're saying that our God is with us in the valley. You're greater than the fear. And God, you're not trying to beat me up. You're protecting me, correcting me, and leading me. Can I get a better amen? amen. Come on, let's close this thing out. Verses five and six. You prepare a table before me right in the presence of my enemies. Let's stop right there. Jesus is looking on going, I got this beautiful banquet table that I have laid out for you. God is looking on going, I actually created this masterful table for me and you to sit at and dine together. And I don't know if there's gonna be earthly food there, but I know this, that in the presence of God, there is joy. In the presence of God, there is peace. In the presence of God, there is love. And I'll keep going. In the presence of God, there is hope, there is purpose, there is goodness. And so God's like, I got a table for you. I want you to sit with me. And guess what? God is so, he's so savage. He's like, we're gonna do it right in front of your enemies. All those people that are trying to come against you right now, we're gonna do it right in front of them. All, all the devil that's trying to take you out, I got a table that we're gonna sit down right, right in front of him. And we're gonna let him know you can't touch this. Come on, MC Hammer. The table. And an amazing pastor that I care about and love wrote a book, one of our small groups did it last semester, called Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. That's for you and the Lord. And when we sit at the table of the Lord, we're in his presence, and when we're in his presence, that's when he fills us up, and that's when he goes on to say this, you actually anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The oil of God, come on, that's the favor of God, the strength of God, the love of God, the anointing of God, the healing of God, and come on, God's like, I'm not just gonna give you a little bit, I'm gonna let you overflow. 
but you only get it, listen to me, in his presence. You only get it in his presence. And then he goes on to say this, so surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. Other translation would say your goodness and your mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Meaning everywhere I go, come on, let's go goodness. Come on love. Everywhere I go, goodness and love. Just, what's that behind you, Pastor Adam? That's just the goodness and the love of God. It just, I, I didn't do anything to earn it. That's just the goodness and the love of God that follows me all the days of my life. Why? Because of something I did? No, because he's my good shepherd. Because even in the valley, his goodness and love are following me. I can't see it, but it's true. I can't feel it always. It doesn't change the fact that it's true. Goodness and love. That's the faithfulness of God, amen? Following me all the days of my life. Hey, on the good days and on the bad days. On the days where I'm pursuing God, on the days when I lose it and I get off track. His goodness and love are bringing me back home, amen? And then David closes it out and says this. So, as a result of God being my shepherd, as a result of you being a good shepherd who leads me, who guides me, who restores me, who refreshes me, who who takes me down the right path. As a result of God, you being with me in the valley. As a result of God, you creating this table for me. As a result of God, you pouring out your oil on me and your goodness and your love following me. Here's my response. I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 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 God, I don't want to miss out on you being my shepherd. I don't want to miss out on any blessing that you have for my life. So God, I will put myself in your house forever. And what are we doing? We're just praying the word of God. We're just lifting up the word. Thank you that you're my shepherd. Thank you that you lead me today. God, I don't want to lead myself. I need you to lead me. Thank you, God, that you're with me in the valley. Give me strength. Be my strength. Remind me, God, that you're with me in the valley. When the fear comes, God, you're greater than the fear. God, thank you that you prepared a table for me. Thank you that you pour your oil of healing out on my life. Thank you, God, that your goodness and your love are following me. So, Lord, I'm going to sit in your house. Can I get a better amen?